गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल माय सेल्फ मिलिंद कंसारा लैब इंचार्ज ऑफ टिंकरिंग लेबोरेटरी टुडे वी हैव स्पेशल गेस्ट डॉक्टर सिद्धार्थ जोशी प्रोफेसर रविंद्र देसाई फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रिकल डिपार्टमेंट आर एन कॉलेज एंड हेड ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट प्रोफेसर चिन्मय देसाई आई रिक्वेस्ट रविंद्र सर टू गिव द information about the siddharth sir as well as i request chinmay sir to say about the session uh, first of all i request chinmay sir uh, good afternoon everyone aaj uh, apne je session arrange karva jiya chhe e solar photovoltaic ane uh, installation ane design ane grid sathe kai rite apne thai ena vise apni pase gana sara uh, apna expert siddharth sir chhe जमने बार वर्ष थी लगभग आ रिन्यूएबल अंदर काम करने अनुभव है पीडीपीयू में एव प्रोफेसर है एम अनुभव लाभ ज्ञान अनुभव लाभ अपन ने आता कलाक दरमियान मिली मत रहे साथ बीजू एक आज थी आप दरक ने एक इन्फॉर्मेशन मैं शेर करने जेवी पार्टिशिपेट कर सर्टिफिकेट अपने अपना है ये आखू से थोड़ू आखू ध्यान एटेंटिवली प्रेजेंट थी करव पड़ से एंड ऑफ द सेशन तमने पाची एना पर लिंक शेर करशूँ एनी क्वीज है स्मोल ईजी एकदम क्वीज हे सेशन ने लगता क्वेश्चन है ये फीडबेक जमा करवा है तो यहाँ पर तमने ई सर्टिफिकेट जरा मेल पर तक मिली जाए तो सर ने हूँ रिक्वेस्ट करी के सेशन स्टार्ट कर पे रविन्द्र सर सर विषय जरा इंट्रोडक्शन तब गुड आफ्टरनून वन एंड ऑल आई रविंद्र देसाई असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन इलेक्ट्रिकल एंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट आर एन जी पी आई टी कॉलेज बारडोली वेलकम्स यू ऑल टूडे वी अरेन्ज वेबिनार ऑन सोलर फोटो वोल्टिक सीस्टम इट्स अ डिजाइन एंड ग्रीड इंटीग्रेशन फॉर दैट टूडे वी हैव एन एक्सपर्ट डॉक्टर सिद्धार्थ जोशी सर असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन इलेक्ट्रिकल एंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट पी डी पी यू गांधीनगर सर we are welcoming you all on behalf of the rngpit family before we start let me give brief intro uh, introductions about the, our expert dr siddharth sir sir has completed his phd in electrical engineering from rk university sir having more than 12 years experience he has published 33 research paper in national and international conference and general on renewable energy sir is lifetime member in IL, uh, iete ie and also member of ieee sir guided several uh, several mtech thesis and delivered lectures on renewable energy like uh, solar and wind energy its integration stand alone system and hybrid system also so now sir over to you share your great experience with us thank you okay thank you sir for your kind introduction good afternoon to one and all our today's topic is on design and grid integration of solar photovoltaic system let me begin with one simple thought when i got a call from the institute at that time they shared one experience with me that student must know how to design a simple rooftop system for residential application and how we can integrate this rooftop system that is connected with the grid so this entire session is basically focusing on a uh, design and grid integration as a whole but any source if you can take an example of solar or wind it comprising of certain basic so i'm going to cover some introductory aspect so in hurried manner but at a glance only and then at the end of this session you may able to design a rooftop system at the end of this session i am going to share one excel sheet in that you can enter the data according to your choice and at last you will able to get some installations rating within your hand so let's begin the session 
So if we can talk about the solar energy, ultimately the solar energy is divided into two parts. The first part is the solar thermal. That is what we are using nowadays. Application of water heater. And the second is our session because this session is purely designed on the basis of electrical engineering perspective. So we will go for the solar PV. This is the GIF for solar thermal, left hand side, bottom corner. And if you can talk about the today's session, ultimately we'll focus on the solar PV. Now, this solar PV is not a new concept. If you can go back in the primary school days, we are having the effect known as photovoltaic effect. So the photons available with the solar is converting into the electrical energy. And ultimately, we are harnessing the green power from it. The details with my email ID is shared on the screen and you will get in the form of PPT at the end of this session also. So at any point of time, you can drop an email if you have any doubt. So let's begin the thing. So this is the brief outline of my talk. If we we'll start with the introduction to green technology at glance, we are having some contributions in Indian grid, some photovoltaic introduction, and the basic difference between solar, photovoltaic, and the conventional PN junction, the characteristic of solar PV. Then what happens if we'll connect that solar PV to the DC load? Then we will go for the standalone photovoltaic system in the case of hybridization. Then we shall focus on the design calculations of standalone PV system. That's what I shared with you in the initial part of this session. Then we have a grid integration of single phase PV system at glance. Then I also prepared some simulation analysis of buck and boost converter that is connected with the PV for having a practical approach. And at last, with the small prayer, we will conclude our session. So if you can start with the introduction to green technology, this figure or this figures that has been seen on your screen is very much familiar to know to you people. So if someone can define the renewable energy sources, so by and large, each and every source are the renewable energy sources. Say, for example, coal. Coal is renewable, but the definition of renewable sources are such a way that it could be replenished within the one human life. So coal is replenished, but we, human beings, are not alive for that much huge time. So this could be categorized as a non-renewable energy sources. Over here, we are talking about the green technology. So in green technology, we will go for the solar, wind, geothermal, biomass, natural gas. And in the current state of the electrical engineering, we may also focusing on the hydrogen energy by harnessing the hydrogen via hydrogen fuel cell. And in the near future, we shall charge our electrical vehicles through solar panels. So this is what the introduction of green technology at the glance, because till this time, you people have phoned up literature with you, why we are harnessing renewable energy, what is a global warming. So it is the takeaway definition from you people at any point of time, if you can refer any page of Google or any other web page. I'll just focus on the technical things in this case. So these are the main sources. Over here, you may find some other new sources also. Say, for example, biomass is known to us, geothermal, probably known to us, the hydrogen technology. It is most important source as far as the fuel part is concerned. In case of hydropower, number of people are not aware the hydropower are divided into three parts. These hydropowers are convectional hydrothermal or hydropower plant, 
the second is the mini hydro and the third one is micro hydro in the case of mini and micro hydro depending upon the megawatt rating of the power plant the output will be decided and it can be categorized as a renewable energy sources then we have a new concept of net zero building so in case of net zero building we are having the conception of the building through renewable energy sources then we have ocean energy it is categorized into again three parts the first is the tidal power harnessing the tides by the position of the moon in the sky it's a natural way of resource then o t e c that is ocean thermal energy conversion and the third is the wave energy solar photovoltaics that we are going to discuss then depending upon the vehicles and fuel technology we will go with the hybrid cars or hybrid electrical vehicles and at last it's a wind energy so in the case of various renewable energy aspect today i shall try to explain you people about basics of solar photovoltaics so if you can talk about the current situation of the percentage contribution of renewable energy sources in the grid particularly in indian grid so ultimately 368 gigawatt total production of the indian grid as of 31st of january 2020 and in that case the percentage total of the renewable energy sources are 23.4% so we are going towards the green technology if you can able to observe this thing in the current situation means nowadays this data is slightly increased this is the data of 24th april 2020 now you might be know that some web pages are available so those web pages are there in the internet i have taken this from the very famous web page mnri so being as a electrical engineer or a student of electrical engineer one must know at least about the present generation means what is happening to the grid so this res term is ultimately the renewable energy sources and we have taken this data from mnri it is 23.5 percentage of the sharing from the total power among that 23.5 percent 60 percent still are coming from the wind more 39 percent is coming from the solar and one percent are the other sources but solar is very easy to install and it will generate the dc energy so it is very popular for a rooftop application because in the urban area like Ahmedabad Surat and other metro cities we shall not able to get higher wind speeds so we are not harnessing much wind power that is available at our rooftop because we are living in the city area so this is one of the most important website if you can click on it you will get lots of other things that is to be used in this case similarly you can get all the data from the particular web page so if you can have this thing with you you will get the various subsidy rates so when we talk with the experts of the your institute they share that we shall have some criteria or discussion on how much power that is to be installed at the rooftop if i have given the right to share the screen this is what the web page of mnri so you get the report you can have the applications and etc etc and how the installations have been achieved similarly some other important pages are there one of the important page is this it is nothing but the vidyut prava dot in so whenever we are having this click on this you will able to get the indian map in that 
And from this map, you will able to see that what is the current demand, how you can have a net metering, what is the cost of net metering. Now, here I will take some discussion on the net metering. Net metering, it's not a conventional metering. Suppose at our home, we are installing one or two kilowatt of solar photovoltaic. So instead of our meter, we shall go for the net metering, that is the bi-directional meter. So if we don't have a much load at our home, we, shall, we are going to shell the power. In India, we are having 96 transactions per day. Means after having a 15 minute of time span, the data is going to be changed and it is to be recorded. And you may also go for various states. In the case of state, you will get the data. See, again, the data has been changed because right now it is 1515. From 1515 to 1516, the data has been changed and the demand has been slightly decreased. So the unit cost will be reduced from 2.81 to 2.78 if you need to feed the power. And this is what the current state demand. Shortage if it is there. Obviously, Gujarat is energy surplus state. And this is our exchange rate of the particular for various power purchase agreements. So these are some important web pages that anyone can be are going to be served and you will get the basic idea about the renewable energy sources and what the Indian grid is used to have this thing. The basic aim to share this kind of thing is to update in the knowledge means from where we are harnessing the electrical energy. And if we are having the rooftop at our home, then how much power it should be produced and how much power we should penetrate into the Great. If you will find some time in this vacation period, you may surf the NREL, that is National Renewable Energy Laboratory. It's a very good tennis laboratory. You will get all the reports, details, papers, transactions in this, so you can upgrade yourself in the era of green technology, if at all. Now, we shall start with our basic concept of the photovoltaics, that is solar PV. When I said that this PV is not a new word for us, the photovoltaic effect says that if the light falls onto the bulk material, the material has the characteristic to generate the power. It is nothing but the photovoltaic effect. Now, this energy that we are harnessing in terms of photons. So photon is the input. So there is a myth. It might be a, I can say a corrected myth, but there is a myth in the mind of uh, people that we are not getting very good efficiency. Suppose the efficiency of solar panel is 15 to 20 percent. Sequence that <coughs> from the available energy uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's all. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, your voice is not clear. Okay. Cut, cut, Thaisha, bache, bache, tamara voice. Okay. Let me check uh, once. Sir, now it is okay? Yes, sir. It is okay. Okay, sure. Okay. Shall I proceed? Okay, sir. So, when we were talked about the photovoltaic effect and the PN junction, I am going to repeat this thing in hurried manner. What has been left due to the bad voice. Sorry for inconvenience. So, as far as photovoltaic effect is concerned, when the photons is going to be fall on the 
material or a bulk material it is a tendency of the material to generate the dc electrical energy known as photovoltaics now if we can take the very basics of the material science or a physics we are having the two bands the first band is the valence band and second band is the conduction band and if you can way back in the 12th classes we are having the concept of the fermi level above that if you will provide the energy via external means then the electrons must jump from the valence band to the conduction band now talking about this fermi level ultimately photovoltaic is nothing but the pn junction it's a wafer of pn type so we have a p type of material we have n type of material and in case of p type of material Band. So when the light will fall on the PV material, then this band will become bands. As the band will become band, there is electron hole pairs are generated, and the electrons is going to be pumped up from the solar photovoltaic panel to the load over here. From this two side, the circuit is open. But if you provide some electrical load, the actual current will flow. There is one more web page. It is very much important for all the engineers. Ultimately, it is a PV education. You can have your own subscription on it, and you will get the various effect and through GIF images. So, if I can start this, if it is no light. This is what the majority charge carriers and minority charge carriers in PN and material respectively. This band, that's what we have discussed, is nothing but this depletion region. Now, these are the two parameters for the photovoltaic cell. The first is the VOC, that is open circuit voltage. The voltage that has been measured across the two terminals of the cell or the module. So if you can click on that. The collision takes place, and more number of electrons and hole pairs are created. But as the circuit is open, we will not get any energy that is to be generated because due to the open circuit, and very small field has been created. But as we have turned up into the short circuit, the electrons are going to travel from anode to cathode. That is what the common concept we are going to apply over here. So when the light will fall on the material, the band is going to be bent. This is what the concept of the PV. Now we are going to compare this PV cell with particular PN junction. So this is what the characteristic of PN junction. I will not take more time in that because because it is known to you. Externally, we are applying the DC power. Obviously, over here some load is connected. Otherwise, you are external supply will be short circuited and the current will flow through diode and this is well known characteristic of the forward biasing of the diode now over here what happens we need to generate a source through pv so in the same case if you can compare the cell with the pn junction the direction of this power flow will be reverse so it is a kind of same thing. In this case, the power flow will be reverse. So, what is the first change we observed? We first change we observed that the direction of the current. Obviously, the polarity of the voltage over here remains same because ultimately it's a DC voltage. So, in the case of source, we are having the diode junction connected with the parallel PV source, and over here. What we have tried to explain is nothing but the recombination. Recombination will create the electron hole pairs and ultimately a current. So PV has been modeled as a current source. It's a DC current source. Lots of people, lots of students have messed with the same thing. It's a current source. So whenever we are generating the current, it is in terms of the current source and it is connected with the external circuit. So 
if you want to plot this graph, what we did, we have just flipped this curve. Why? Because we are changing the y-axis on the negative side. So this is a small video from which how we can flip the curve. This is conventional PN junction. Sir, slide change. And then we flip it. I think slide hang the Okay. Uh, now it is okay. Uh, no, sir. It is the slide is photovoltaic effect and PN junction. Now it is changed to the PN junction PV cell. Yes, sir. I am on this only. Okay. Sir. So I am trying to repeat the same thing. In case of PN junction and PV cell, ultimately we are having the external circuit. It has been fed at some DC source to the diode. At that time, we have known to this characteristic. That is what we call as a forward bias characteristic. Similarly, over here we need to generate the electrical energy. So the direction of the current is reverse. As the direction of the current will be reversed, we need to flip this, flip this IV curve into this first quadrant. So how it is flipped? So this is how the curve has been flipped. It will go down and then we will change the axis because now we are in the generating region. So it is very easy from this figure that the direction of the current is reversed and the characteristic has been flipped. This pure, neatly shaped oval curve is the ideal diode characteristic. And this curve is known as the IV curve. In this case, we are having anode and cathode, and we are assuming that current is flowing through anode and cathode. Over here, if you can change the terminal, you will get the positive voltage also. So this is the basic difference between PN junction and the PV cell. Now, how we can convert that cell into module, module into array, array into string. Battery. If it's a first semester theory concept of the series and parallel connected DC system. If somebody can say that, what is the application of series connected DC system, then anybody will love to answer. But if you can talk about the parallel applications of DC system, we are happy to share the examples of various loads, but they all are working on AC. So if you can take an example of parallel connected DC system, then you can take a load which has some current demand. Say, for example, 2 ampere is the current demand at 12 volt. But one battery should share 12 volt and maximum current is 1 ampere. So we need to accommodate one more battery in parallel to that battery. So our current demand will be double. Likewise, all the cells are connected in series for the preparation of either module or panel. Usually, the panel is more cell compared to the module, but more or less the module and panel are the similar words. Similarly, in the case of panel, all the cells are connected in series and you will get the higher amount of voltage at the output of the panel and depending upon the selection of the inverter, we will decide how we can connect certain panel into series and parallel combination if we can talk about the single cell, generally the cell rating is of 3 watt and 0.5 volt DC. The cell thickness is 100 to 500 micrometer with the thickness of about 0.3 mm and the surface area is 100 centimeter square to 225 centimeter square. Talking about the module, number of cells for the experimental purpose, we can have a module number of modules we are going to accommodate as a solar panel. Now, the basic question is how the solar panel is oriented. 
the first answer, what we will get, those who are working in the field of solar, sir, it is in the direction of the sun. Obviously, it is very correct answer. It is in the direction of the sun, but the direction of the sun is not fixed. It is going to be vary. It is not going to be vary for all the time, but it is going to be vary with the change in climatic condition also. Say, for example, season. In the case of winter, we are having the slant radiation. In the case of summer, that's what we are facing nowadays, exactly perpendicular with some angle. That is nothing but the delta declination angle. That thing is already done in the school. Geographic classes, if you can go away in the school, you will be recall this concept. But the, nevertheless, the point is this, how the solar panel is oriented. Ultimately, the panel is oriented for India. It is oriented towards true south because we are in the northern hemisphere. So if I'm standing by facing true south of my face, the sun will never go on the back side. So the panels are oriented towards south. Similarly, in the southern hemisphere, they are oriented towards the north. And the thing which is not written over here is at the equator, it is a flat. So that is how the panels are oriented. Now we talked about the important concept of the photovoltaics IV cow under standard test condition. The standard test condition abbreviated as STC, which is defined as insulation, that is radiation of 1000 watt per meter square, 25 degree centigrade temperature and 1.5 air mass. This is known as the standard test condition. Sometimes it is standard temperature condition, but the correct word is the standard test condition. So if you can have a panel with you and you are going to open it, taking terminal outside and you will connect the multimeter over here, putting the knob into volt meter on DC side, you will get the open circuit voltage at that radiation because during daytime, the radiation is not fixed. Similarly, the second concept is the short circuit. In the case of short circuit over here, the ISC will be here. So we are short circuiting the two terminals plus and minus of the PV panel via A meter. Again, keeping our A meter into DC mode, we will get the short circuit current. And if you connect a significant amount of the load, then the load will draw the power depending upon the capacity of the load. So if you want to plot this curve, either you can start with VOC or you can start with ISC. Suppose I will start with the VOC. Then we are going to cut out the resistance and ultimately we are going to bypass the resistance and I will get the ISC. At ISC, the power, this is DC power, V into I, the current is maximum, voltage is zero. So you will get the power equals to zero. So the characteristic will start from zero. Which characteristic? PB. And ultimately at VOC, your current is zero. Then again, your characteristic will end at zero. Then this characteristic, upper one, is known as the PB, power versus voltage characteristic of photovoltaic. And obviously, at the some point of time or a unique point at the particular radiation, we will try to harness a maximum power point where we will get the maximum power from this solar panel. Number of students are known to the maximum power transfer theorem. It is the same point where the RTH equals to RL. But as the God will vary the radiation, obviously, this curve will be highly changed or modified with the change in the radiation at the temperature level of the earth. So let's talk about a particular STC ratings of one of the panel. I'll not discuss all, but you will get the idea of the panel rating. Indian weather is very good for the multi-crystalline and polycrystalline silicon material. So if you can talk about the Kyocera panel, it is a multi-crystalline module, 36 cells. Peak power or DC power at STC is 120. 
the voltage at p max is 16.9 rated current is 7.1 ampere open circuit voltage is 21.5 volt similarly short circuit current is 7.45 ampere so if we are maintaining this condition and we are short circuiting this panel we will able to get the value of 7.45 and at last with some mechanical dimensions the module efficiency is 12.9% likewise we are having the other modules also on the screen so there are certain light intensity in general terms so this table shows about the one sun 2.2 sun in one sun we are having the maximum radiation and if you can cut down the radiation level it can be technically speaking in terms of one sun 0.8 0.6 0.4 and 0.2 respectively in the according of sun performance the incident radiation or incident irradiation is going to be changed with the lack of timing i am not going to share this data sheet i will again share in the ppt mode so how we can have the formation of cell to module and array suppose if each cell will generate the 0.6 volt and all the cells are connected in series in the addition of that what you will get this you will get as a open circuit voltage by adding the 36 cells similarly whenever you will reach at the 36 cells this 36 cells will become a module then if number of modules are connected in series you will get the higher voltages higher voltages in terms of open circuit voltage and voltage at maximum power that is vmpp voltage so as the voltage is going to be increased panels are said to be connected in series likewise they are connected in the parallel if we need the higher current now if you can plot this curve in particular way to find out the efficiency so the biggest rectangle that should be cut out from the mpp point to various isc and voc axis that is current in voltage axis you will get one factor known as the fill factor this is the ratio of power at maximum power point that is multiplication of vr into ir that is available from the data sheet divided by voc into isc so over here if you multiply this you will get the fill factor now this slide showing the effect of the temperature on the ir curve over here the radiation is 1000 watt per meter square or 100 milliwatt per centimeter square and by keeping this radiation constant we are changing the temperature of the photovoltaic module from 25 degrees centigrade to 50 degrees centigrade and 50 degree centigrade to 75 degree centigrade so at that time in the case of pv module voltage or pv cell voltage the difference in the per unit has been observed so we are not going to conclude from this slide we will conclude in the next slide similarly at 25 degree centigrade we are changing the radiation so in this case the 100 watt per meter square 750 watt per meter square and 500 watt per meter square the application of the radiation on the current has been observed it means that the radiation will highly affect the short circuit current and hence maximum power point current and the temperature will affect the open circuit voltage by and large so when we are discussing about the open circuit voltage and short circuit current at that time we are having the iv and pv curve with the change in radiation and the change in temperature because in day to day life we are facing change in both the cases that is radiation and the temperature now as far as iv curve is concerned we are having the three zone the first zone that is the first rectangle in this case 
it is the constant current zone or current source zone the module has been operating in the current source zone then you will get almost constant current then we are having the power source zone and then we are having the voltage source zone so we'll try to operate our load at this point it is nothing but the power source zone we'll try to operate it suppose if you want to connect the resistance ultimately at the first point if you start by inserting the full resistance you will get the open circuit voltage if you cut out the resistance you will get the short circuit current so you are going to operate in all the three zones and this is what the comparison of the same curve that's what i tried to describe in the previous slides in zone wise there is also one rectangle it has been seen in the outer side of the pv module as the power generated by this rectangle is more than the rated power of the module we have considered inner rectangle at mpv point to compute the efficiency of the pv module so we have taken this example of kyocera intentionally this is what the impact of the first slide change in temperature on the open circuit voltage of the module with data previously it was per unit and over here in the second case in the second case where the cursor is there hope you have seen this cursor is at 25 degree centigrade constant and we are going to vary this radiation particularly so as we are going to vary the radiation the short circuit current is going to be change there are some more resistance that is to be incorporated in the solar pv module these resistance are resistance offered by the material itself the first resistance is the sent resistance and the second resistance is the series resistance it means that if you can open up the pv cell or pv module the resistance will not come out from the material but it is a tendency of the material to oppose the flow of the current say for example if you have a sent resistance then it is due to some manufacturing defect over cell particularly at low light level there will be less generated current so if my sent resistance is low then that resistance is connected in parallel with the diode because it is shut it will increase the power loss of the cell or the module in similarly in the series resistance is the movement of the current through emitter to base so ultimately it will reduce the fill factor and it is also the contact resistance between metal contact and the silicon itself because in the pv module if you have seen you will be able to know some silver color buses it is nothing but the metal contact and it is the end of a particular cell or a particular part of the cell and accordingly the series resistance will be changed i also mentioned some important leaks of the ebook you may easily explore this if you want now we'll talk about the parallel or sent resistance on the ib curve of pv means if you are having certain boundaries of parallel resistance or a sent resistance then how it is affected with the curve so for a cell particularly have losses of less than 1% due to its parallel resistance rp is greater than 100 voc upon isc and if you apply this this much reduction in the iv curve you will get this much reduction in the iv curve you will get from the standard iv curve so if you can take an example of 60 watt panel by considering the 60 watt peak power 17.1 open circuit voltage 3.5 ampere short circuit current 58 watt is the net power output with a fill factor of more than 80% 3.8 ampere again short circuit current uh, i beg my pardon 17.1 volt is the voltage at mpp 3.5 ampere is the current at mpp 
that is the multiplication, you will get the 58 volt and 3.8 ampere is the short circuit current and 21.1 volt is the open circuit voltage. Obviously, 21 volt is higher compared to 17. So 21.1 is the VOC. And in this case, our RP is greater than 555.260. So there is less possibility to divert the current through RP. For a particular large cell, it might be a 7 MPa and VOC might be 0.6 volt, which says that the parallel resistance should be greater than or about 9 ohm because it can be applicable for cell, for module, for array, for string, and for entire power plant. Talking about the series resistance, again, it is 1% due to this series resistance. That is the voltage torque that has been observed. And this is what the series resistance as far as possible. So this was reduction in the curve. You might be observed. And similarly, we'll get the particular large cell, which is less than 0.0009 ohm. If you have an actual impact by considering some random value from 0.05 ohm, that is series resistance and one ohm of parallel resistance, this much reduction in the curve. See, this is the reduction in the curve. And if some tall buildings are existing next to PV module, then there is a shedding on the PV module, then this constant is again increased and your curve will go down. So there are lots of solutions by incorporating the bypass and blocking diodes with the module. That is to be there. So this is our final equation of light generating the photovoltaic system through light. If IPV is the photovoltaic output current, the IPH is the photo current, IRS, particularly current due to reverse saturation in MPL, it is usually into 10 to minus 12 ampere and with some other constant. Over here, we have a, when the light will fall on the material, it will generate the current over here. It's a single diode model of the PV cell or a PV module. This is our RSH, that is parallel or shunt resistance. This is our RAC, series resistance, and ultimately we'll get the IPV from here and we'll get the voltage. If you can simplify this equation, our current is proportional to the voltage with Ln. Current proportional to Ln of voltage, it also proves that with the high change in current, there is less change in voltage. And we have also checked that with the change in radiation, there is highly impact in the current. And with the change in temperature, there is high impact in the voltage. Now, we'll talk about the current and voltage curves for particularly electrical load, and that, that is nothing but the DC load. So if you can take any example of DC load, you can connect that DC load with the panel. Say, for example, fan. We have enjoyed the fan by wearing a caps in our primary school days or our childhood days, where it will vary with the, any speed. That's what we don't know at that time what is the speed also at that time. So we need a converter in between as an interfacing medium, but it will operate randomly. So if you can take an example of DC load, the first is the resistive load. So if you connect the resistive load with the PV panel, then the first concept one must able to know that is the operating point. So this is the operating point. By visually, anyone can check what is operating point. But it is a point at which the IV curve of PV, IV curve of the PV is interfacing the IV curve of the load. So now you can think about the curve, means IV curve of resistance. Obviously, it is the straight line. And it could be modeled using I equals to 1 by R into V. So as I mentioned that if you increase the R, you will reach at VOC. 
if you will decrease the ad, we will reach at the ISC. So likewise, this operating point will vary. In this diagram, we are having the various slopes because we were trying to keep the radiation and the temperature fixed. But if the climatic condition will change, we are having the multiple operating points for the fixed resistance load and those maximum power points are far away, means we are not getting the efficiency at the higher level or larger level and accordingly the power output is going to be varied. So we need to incorporate certain algorithm that is what we call MPPT. The second is much interesting example of the DC motor IV curve. This is what the IV curve of the convectional DC motor. Now we are going to establish the relationship between this curve of the DC motor and the IV curve of the PV module at different radiation by taking the operating point considerations. So when we will discuss this is what the superimposing of the DC motor curve on the various IV curve at the different radiation. Now, if one can use this motor, that is permanent magnet DC motor for water pumping application connected with the PV. So the problem of the curve is very severe. The main problem is that during startup current, it requires the very high radiation for 400 watt per meter square, but it can run at 200 watt per meter square. So if we want to turn up our DC motor during early morning or late evening for the farming, farming application, then we would not able to operate. So certain devices are known as linear current booster. It will convert the high current low voltage or a low current high voltage to low voltage high current. So at least you will get sufficient amount of voltage that is to be developed. Though the motor will rotate in very slow speed. Though we are getting a little amount of water during early morning and the late evening. And this is what I explained. And this is what the connection of the linear current booster. The low current high voltage supply is converting into high current low voltage supply. And the third component is nothing but the battery. That is IV characteristic of the battery. If you are not considering the internal resistance, it could be a straight line at some voltage. <coughs> Sorry. And if you are considering the res uh, resistance, depending upon the charging and discharging condition, the IV curve will be very. Now we'll talk about the standalone solar PV system and its component. Talking about the various standalone solar system, nowadays we are not having the single source. We are having the multiple source, means more than one renewable energy source. So if we can use the PV connected with the load, ultimately now, our load is AC in nature, that is alternating in nature because it will consume a power at constant 230 volt and the current rating is depending upon the loading condition. So in that case, there might be a kind of this system where photovoltaic panel, charge controller, inverter and the load. So if you can talk about the typical system or a home system, we are having the PV generator, why it is hybrid because the battery is used as a backup. Then through charge controller, we can run our DC loads. That is operated DC lamps, radio, television, etc. If we can talk about the double or hybrid sources, we may also go for multiple PV modules. We are having the different islanding schemes. We can use the diesel generator. We can have a various wind options or a conventional diesel power plant options as a backup and we can have turn on and turn off the load and it is obviously the demand of our bottlenecks. If you need to explore further, 
the video has been made depending upon the various hybrid energy schemes only on the renewable energy system and its design now we'll back to the main concept of the standalone photovoltaic system it is nothing but the calculations of the balance pv system over here one action has been made from first to sixth instruction it is very easy and it is readable to all you need to have some input you can input some data suppose one load of a residential load what was the loading condition we cannot say accurately because it is going to be vary then how many loads are there say for example fan tube light refrigerator i can add over here pump that is water pump suppose pump is of 500 watt per number of unit you can operate for 15 minutes per day so we will get the total power that is what we are consuming on daily basis and that's what we need so in step 1 any user can enter the value in this sheet so we'll able to get the total voltage and total energy our next component is the charge controller selection and the inverter capacity this 990 has been come up over here as the inverter is static element we are assuming the efficiency of the inverter as a 96% in this sheet the upper and lower cap has been also mentioned with some field practice experience but some inverters at constant loading condition may give above 97% so if you will put this you will get this much va rating you may turn off turn on this or converting this value into nearest value of the market availability of the inverter and similarly sir, I, yes sir uh, sir i think slide is uh, side slide is hang out sorry sir uh, now sir a solar pv system slide is no sir uh, stand alone pv system ha huh, it has been seen na yes sir. now any excel sheet is there Uh, no sir, not. Mm -hmm. One Excel sheet is opening by a hyperlink. Uh, sir, you uh, you can share the screen of the Excel sheet. Okay, sir. Sir, can I press stop sharing? Yes, sir. No problem. Uh, uh, sorry for the technical glitch. I request Ravindra Desai, sir. Uh, in between we are going to share our feedback link and then after we again come so Uh, sorry for the interrupt due to the network uh, problem sir is left from the, the channel sir is going to connect again
Yes, sir. Now the, screen has, uh, now the screen has been shared. Uh, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry for inconvenience. Uh, sir, sir, but screen is blank. Okay, it is visible completely. Okay, uh, sir, one request is that when I will turn on the PPT again, please guide me. Okay, sir. No. So, sorry guys for inconvenience. Now the thing is that we can enter some data. Suppose in any house we are having a fan, cubed refrigerator. Suppose I can go for a pump. With comprising of 500 watt, then we are having one number of pump at our home and 25 that is uh, operating hours 15 to 20 minutes. We can operate the pump. So, accordingly, the voltage has been calculated, and with the change in voltage rating, over here, total watts and energy is going to be change. Over here, this total voltage are AC voltage. Particularly, we require inverter. So, this voltage, what we are calculating over here, are the AC voltage. But over here, power equals to voltage into current. And in the DC system, particularly at our home, we can have a DC load or an AC load, more or less at the unity power factor. So we will go for the having 96% of the efficiency of the inverter. That's what we can assume. And we are having the KVA capacity as per the load requirement. Similarly, we can do it for the energy calculation. Mind well, for the good design, for the good design, ultimately we will go for same efficiency in the case of energy as well as the power output. Now, second stage. In second stage 2B, we are having solar charge controller selection. So we are having some whatever, and the voltage is there with us. Now, according to the battery rating or charge controller selection in photovoltaic system, which is available in this world, we are having 12 volt, 24 volt, and 48 volt available in the field. However, in the laboratory, you may find above 48 volt also. So from that, you will get the maximum DC current. Then we will start with the battery capacity. We are having this 3068 over here, whatever. And we have assumed system voltage over here. That is 24. If you can change this thing, the entire design is going to be change. I will keep it 24 only. This is our battery capacity and then we can assume the depth of discharge. Now you can check your mobile currently. Suppose it is 70% charge. Then it is state of charge. That is 70%. Over here for assuming 70% depth of discharge meaning only you can use 70% of the stored energy. It means that if I have an example of 100 chocolates, I can use only 70 chocolates. That's 30 has been escaped. So the first question is why this much low DOD? So we are assuming the worst data for a best design. Anyhow, you can assume 90 also, 95 also. And this could be assumed 70 in this case. And according to that, your actual ampere hour will be there. This ampere hour is of battery. Obviously, in market, 183 ampere battery is not available, but nearest value is 200 AH you can take. Then we'll go with the SPV sizing. First, we'll go with the energy calculation. We are considering the 95%. Again, the battery static element will get the 3229 3, energy from SPV. We are assuming only 4.5 hours of the daily sunlight, where we will have effective power output. Again, there is a cap over here. You may assume 6 hours, 7 hours, depending upon that. 
your SPV module voltage will be changed. So this is 718. So we are designing an 800 watt system. According to that, you will set the wiring depending upon the wattage and voltage. So your current rating and this voltage rating, this is a DC current rating. Depending upon current, you will select the gauge of the wire that is SWG standard wire gauge sheet is available. And we have already calculated the alternating current of voltage capacity. Obviously, it's a single phase system at our home. The current would be computed from the power upon voltage. So 990 by 230 is 4.30 in this case. So we can approximate this value at 4.3. And similarly, you will get the current and the power both. So if you can have this data with you, you will get all the things, whatever you want in the sheet. I beg my pardon, it is automatically changed. It is 4.5. And you will get the power output as a 4.5 MPN and 230 volt. And whenever you are having this data with you, you will design your own photovoltaic energy system from your side. Now, sir, I need your help. I need to share my screen. OK, sir. Uh, OK, sir. No problem. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, clearly. Hello? Yes, sir, you are audible. Hello. Now I guess the screen has been shared. Hello, am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, you are audible, but screen is not displayed. Now it is in PPT form. Is it there? No, no sir. You have to click on share screen. Yes, sir. I have clicked. Just a minute, sir. Again, I am doing the same thing. Stop screen, share screen, share. Now, sir? Uh, no, sir. Screen is not there. I've shared the same. Hello. Uh, due to technical glitch, we are not uh, able to connect with sir. But uh, I want to say that RNGPIT has the various types of laboratory in our uh, college, like the solar lab, tinkering laboratory, uh, assistant electrician laboratory, automation laboratory, food processing laboratory. So whatever you study in this video about the solar panel, as well as the solar cell structure, all types of equipments are there in our college at the solar laboratory. So if anyone want to see the laboratory and uh, take a look, real look of the components, then they are uh, feel free to contact us. We have the, all the uh, laboratories. We have other tinkering laboratories as well as the e yantra laboratory which is with the collaboration of the IIT Bombay. So if any participants in, interested in that type of laboratory to use their laboratories, they are feel free to contact our college. Again, automation. Nowadays, the technology is using the PLC. Okay. 
so how to run the plc and how to program the plc we have the separate lab of the plc in which different 8 to 10 companies plc are there so you can uh, explore the plc of the different companies as well as taught that the how to program the plc okay. so there are the various laboratories in our college another laboratory is like the food processing laboratory okay then boiler laboratory everything is there at the our college so i request all of you to once visit the college and the laboratories to see the different equipments okay i think sir is with us again hello ravindra sir okay uh, ravindra sir uh, please give some idea about the solar technology recently see uh, regarding about the solar technology today we arrange uh, such a uh, renewable energy sources based on that there is mainly two types of the sources rightly we are using into the india mostly solar as well as the wind power system. Uh, today only we are focusing on the solar uh, photovoltaic system which is based on the uh, sunlight which is directly fall on the solar panel and that solar panel which is generated that electricity that will be helpful for the save the uh, uh, another aspect also we can uh, save that particular energy we can store and also we can fire to the grid also so the main thing is to how to design the solar energy how to integrate with the grid these are the basic fundamental concept regarding uh, concept regarding this webinar also today as well as in our institute rng patel institute of technology bardoli having a solar lab also uh, where the numbers of uh, um, experiments uh, which are also available uh, we set up the uh, different uh, 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 sessions for that so that the student enroll and they can get the experience and uh, as well as they can uh, do the practicals on the uh, different different solar equipments also us again okay hello okay am i audible yes sir you are completely audible okay shall i proceed from where i stopped okay Thank sir no uh, sir i think 5 minutes okay I, i just want need to wrap up the things okay 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 Now our next section is the grid integration of the single phase PV system. Over here, at the grid integration point, we need to pump up the active power. So what we will take from the grid side from the single phase system, we are taking the sample of the voltage and current that has been given to the alpha, beta to dq component. Suppose we will take the beta component first, and through phase shifter block we are converting into alpha. and we are having the closed loop through pi controller and we will generate the row i am going to share this ppt also it has been clubbed with the same ppt and you can explore the more from this uh, link which is given as under so if you can compare this vq axis that is equals to 0 so we are feeding only active power into the grid similarly we will generate the row by converting this dq to alpha beta axis coordinates and accordingly you will generate the idn iq and that has been compared with the reference current in voltage taken in by keeping the sample of vt and it from the photovoltaic module through mppt controller 
we are generating the star quantity over here it is be zero and we are generating the reference v beta and we are having the gate drive circuit and we are targeting the pulses of the single phase inverter this entire system could be running in the closed loop now we are having some simulations in the pc in software this is the iv and pv echo of the solar module and we have having the boost converter calculations with given mppt algorithm in the software even in metlab also over here we are having some change in radiation by keeping temperature constant and over here the boost converter has been simulated for constant dc load at stc and the resistance is of 20 ohm this is the case work and over here the boosting of the voltage has been observed for 15 ohm again we will increase the load by decreasing the resistance again we will have a boosting effect and this second graph is what the p max that is maximum power and p not then the watt solar shows the power drawn by the system and this is the pulse of the switch again at 10 ohm again at 5 ohm and now we will check the pulse has been removed so at this condition there is no boosting effect but still we are getting the close efficiency to the generated power this is guys this is our maximum power transfer theorem now we can have a variable radiation and temperature and certain cases have been discussed now if you can remove the switch so this is the comparison without mppt and this is with mppt i'm going to repeat it this is without mppt you can check the pmax and p0 pulse and this is vmppt now we are going to conclude and summing up this thing by having one video with us so we'll able to know that which things we are facing nowadays So after 10 years the same fellow came in the platform of ted and the link is already there so as far as the conclusion and summing up if you need to install a solar pv panel at your rooftop then this is what the price per kilowatt per kilowatt 
and it is available in even any website. But the beneficiary should have at least 100 square feet shadow free area per kilowatt capacity of the solar system on the rooftop. These are the various quotations as of now. These are the other subsidies that has been given by the government, but due to this pragmatic, it has been stopped for a while and we will hope it will be recovered soon. So let's pray for the humanity. And with this, I'm going to conclude my lecture with one message. Because one more thing that is energy conservation. So thank you very much for your time and patience listening. I am very much thankful to all the coordinators and the institute for giving me an opportunity in this crisis in the world through online platform. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Siddharth, sir. Uh, sir, we have some questions from the participants. Please. So, uh, okay, sir. The question is, uh, explain from the basics in the next session include the brief about the grid integration and what about the frequency mismatch so sir can okay, you sure. say something about the frequency mismatch uh, usually what happens as far as frequency mismatch is concerned this thing could be highly pronounced for the wind integrations but in case of small frequency mismatch what happens the inverter works at the constant frequency or the band of the frequency because regulatory board in India, we are having 49.5 to 50.5. So say, for example, if there is a central inverter where the frequency will be depending upon the inverter switching frequency, but the PV is not working. So at that time, to maintain the frequency, certain amount of power has been shedded shaded in terms of the generator and the frequency has been matched. Now, when we are talking about the frequency mismatch, in that case, we should study in detail about a three phase grid integration because in single phase grid integration, we are having an inverter which is smart and hybrid in nature. So if your frequency will mismatch, it will disconnect the uh, source from the system and our solar home will be enlightened with the convectional grid automatically due to the capability of the inverter. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So, uh, an another question is uh, that the query, is there any related value of heat absorb of solar panel? Like maybe also damage in very okay. high heat absorption sometimes or not? It, it happens usually due to the color means unawareness of not cleaning the modules frequently due to the bird droppings, due to the improper placement of the cell, due to the constant shedding on the photovoltaic module, it might be happen. But people are recommended to clean the module at least once in a day. Say for example, I'll take one practical aspect. One company known as Sukam, it's an inverter company, they are start manufacturing the modules. And with my students, mm. we have installed one power plant at one of the rooftop. So they recommended that. Why we are doing the same? Because people are calling because they are not cleaning the modules and inverter is not working. Obviously, inverter will work on the specific voltage window. If the voltage will go down, obviously the inverter mm. will not work. In technical language, in power electronics language, we can call it as a DC link voltage. Okay. And sir, last question is the, uh, what is the effect of panel angle on efficiency of panel per degree? Okay. Uh, there are different values of the angle. It is known as beta. That is tilt angle. Usually, what we have discussed in that uh, slide is we are oriented towards south because we are in the northern hemisphere. But the tilt angle is always equals to angle of latitude. However, some degree of freedom is given for small power plant. Otherwise, the angle is fixed. That is angle of latitude. However, 
in certain locations if degree of freedom will not be taken we will go for mechanical maximum power point tracking so your panel will rotate uh, panel will oscillate like a sunflower okay. so it is always oriented towards the uh, sun's okay. direction okay uh, sir one or two more questions are there will you allow please, please. yes yes sir so the question is what is difference between radiative and nighttime pv okay in case of uh, radiative pv usually during night time what happens this uh, rs and rsh it will take the power from the grid because it's a bulky material so at night time there is a protection simple diode is there so during day time in the radiative pv we are having only 0.7 volt drop loss voltage drop loss due to that diode but during night time that blocking diode it acts as a block because it acts as a reverse bias due to reverse power flow of the current oh. so the material has tendency to face the current from the grid and it will block that <coughs> and uh, sir last question is the government yes, is plan planning to install solar power plant in ladakh so will yes. it be efficient as temperature in concern yes it is it is I means in ladakh particularly the temperature variation is very low and that what advantages we will take because as we have taken theoretically only in this case the main impact on the voltage is due to temperature so in ladakh the temperature variation is less compared to what we are facing in gujarat so we are in the era of the constant voltage system so if we can maintain that voltage then the output is awesome in our case in addition to that right now we are having two main modules that is polycrystalline and monocrystalline people are also harnessing from the silicon amorphous in that case they will reduce the short circuit current and increasing the open circuit voltage keeping power output constant So in such situation like Ladakh, where the radiation is also have a big issue, at that time we are having the less change in the short circuit current because the overall value of the current is very less. So okay. we can harness the uh, effective power output from the installed PV, and we are having a one megawatt power plant next to our institute, and okay. we are having. that a 1 megawatt peak power capacity we are not getting 1 megawatt every day every day just depending Correct. upon the climatic conditions and installed capacity sir, it's installed capacity peak power please yes, sir. sir yes sir are solar panels affected due to heavy rain from anyway yes due to reduction in radiation there is slight change in the short circuit current we have taken a case study of the gujarat high court in the month of june the top floor air conditions are working from the installed pv capacity so okay. it is also depending upon the loading condition at that time thank you very much sir for thank your you. valuable guidance now thank i request you. ravindra sir for the vote of thanks of the sir Uh, thank you very much sir uh, it was very info uh, informative session i hope this uh, webinar will help to our student and uh, thank you very much for giving your valuable time with us thank you very much thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir for very micro knowledge regarding pv module as well as uh, uh, load calculation and very interactive session thank you very much to our uh, alumni student Uh, for inter making this session interactive question answer okay. thank okay, you sir, sir. Uh, thank you sir goodbye and good evening okay. goodbye good evening good thank evening. you very much okay.